YouTubes, I come bearing good news. For one thing, my camera battery is recharged now, so I won't be needing to use my webcam for the rest of this video. And hopefully it should last out for the whole length of this video, but who knows. Secondly, this is the circuit board from the previous video, and I have removed all that toner without having to spend tons and tons of money on expensive chemicals. And all it cost me was one penny. I simply got a coin and scraped all the toner off, so we now have the exposed copper. Even though this wasn't an absolute perfect transfer, there is nothing wrong with any of the traces, they are all complete. Holding it up to the light, you can see that there are some gaps in the big copper areas, but that's not going to be a problem because none of those are connected to anything. And as you probably remember, when I, before I etched this, I did touch it up with the PCB pen to make sure none of the traces would be bad. So I now have a PCB ready to have the parts soldered onto it. But firstly, I'm just going to trim this down a bit because it is a little bit too big. There we go, an instant diet thanks to my favourite power tool, the jigsaw. Also gave this another cleaning with white spirit and just look at the muck that came off this. But anyway, we should have good solder contact when I solder the parts in, which I'm going to do right now. So that's what I'm going to do right now, and after I've done that, I'll get back to you. And here is the finished product. Even soldered some wires onto it. Got a power cable, output from the oscillator, and an audio in, because I'm going to try to do singing arcs with this as well. It's lucky I still kept that printout so I knew where to put all the parts. As you can see, there is one tiny little difference. In the original printout, you can see there's a potentiometer here. That's connected in series with this 4.7 ohm, I mean 4.7 kilo ohm resistor, because 5 kilo ohms is the ideal resistance I need there, and I don't have any 5 kilo ohm resistors, so I thought, put a 4.7k in series with a 1 kilo ohm variable resistor, that way I can get 5 kilo ohms easy. Well, as it turns out, this 470 ohm resistor coupled to this one gives me 5 kilo ohms exactly. So there must be some kind of a tolerance issue with one or maybe both of those resistors. But either way, I've got exactly 5 kilo ohms there, so I'm quite happy with that. Now I'm going to wire this up to the MOSFETs on my flyback driver. And let's see what she can do. Well, they say the proof is in the testing. And I've tested the circuit and... I'm not really getting much of an arc off it. As you can see, we have the circuit that I made right here. There's the MOSFETs to boost the power from the 555 and the flyback itself, but I'm not really getting much from it. We turn the power on, or if I turn the power on rather, I know something is going on because I can hear some fizzing at the ends of the wires. And in fact, this yellow wire is connected to the high voltage output of the flyback transformer, and even if I put my hand near it, just even if it's just so much as one finger, you can see it attracts to my hand. So this is putting a lot of static onto that wire. But even though there might be about 20,000 volts here, I mean, the, the 555 is definitely oscillating. This is probably interfering major with the microphone, but... I'm not getting much of an arc off that. And this is probably not the best type of wire to put 20,000 volts through either, but still. I just don't think the frequency and duty cycle are right for this particular flyback. And I thought they would be, but obviously they're not. Uh, it looks like I'm going to have to change a few things on this. It's a little later now, and I've changed all the resistors and capacitors apart from this one. So this has all the original components from the other flyback driver that I made. I found it works better without this resistor in the circuit, so shorted that out. And now I get sparks, arcs and coronas aplenty. I'll just turn this on, and I can show you that it now works pretty good. Getting a pretty juicy arc there. Not as good as I want, but still... As you can see, it's working pretty good. And this wire is now starting to glow red hot. Oh, now we're getting a little bit of smoke coming off the insulation there. Oh, yeah. 
I know I better not do that for too long because without the fan these MOSFETs are going to overheat. It's just that with the fan it blows the arc all over the place so I don't get a very steady arc from it. That is really starting to stink. Anyway, I think that's pretty good for a first attempt at making a PCB board. Later on I'm going to make a different driver for this using a different chip and a different um, different configuration and different MOSFETs and same probably use the same flyback shouldn't really touch that because I don't really want to zap myself I haven't discharged it at the moment can't remember if I discharged it but still anyway that's all going to be in another video well that's it for this episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop remember if you like these videos, feel free to subscribe, you'll be glad you did, and tell your friends about Cool Dude Clem and his electronic workshop. And, if you want to see the previous episode of Cool Dude Clem's electronic workshop, click on the box on the right. Or, if you want to see more of my videos, click on me right now to visit my channel. That's just about it for now, I'll see you next time. Well, I won't see you next time. But anyway, until next time, goodbye.